this isn't a sales pitch. This is just no. like, seriously truthful. You this think these are amongst like the best prints you've had done? This is a gold hawk. Is it gold? Oh, but, gold. <laughs> <laughs> there goes a the TV commercial. <laughs> So many things to talk about with you. Thank you for such a lovely saying, you know. Well, and Do I, you want to sit inside or outside? Uh, uh, I'll see you in the window. I'm not going out in the Bloomingdale street at the moment. <laughs> you never know. The people you meet these days. I don't know. I'll sit here, shall all I? Right, go on. There's water here. I've got that. It so. doesn't get any better. Look, I've been, all this stuff I've been told to bring along, you know. <laughs> Take this, take that, don't forget that, take the other. So I'll do one first, just to start us off, because it's funny, you know. It's your favourite. Yeah, it's me. No, it's their favourite. Okay, what is it? <laughs> what, what, what he's doing here is how most of our conversations start. Most days, I'm greeted by this. If you hold it up, maybe just to hear, they can hear it more. <laughs> Conservationist work. Oh. <laughs> a fart a day keeps an animals alive. Is how we seem to work on it, and it really doesn't get much better than that because often. <laughs> <laughs> also, Ralph never knows quite when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of that. Sorry. But it's always very funny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we, we always talk every day on Skype, don't we? And at six o'clock. Not every evening. day. You're never there. <laughs> Okay, not, not every there, day, not every day. But yeah. we seem to always have this conversation in the, in the day where we're just swapping stories about the day, working on ideas, going through things, but it always starts with that fart machine and he, <laughs> and he keeps the image off and you just hear this squelching sound coming through. <laughs> and it's almost like you think, I'm not going to guess who it is. But no. no one else calls me with a fart machine. Oh, <laughs> oh that why you know it's always me. Yeah, that's right. Oh, so I didn't the know other, that. Everyone but, get them will confuse each other like hell, that's what I'd say. But the other yeah. sound, because we did two books on birds before Critical yeah. Critters, and in the days before farts, um, you, <laughs> you, you used to call me and, well, use that, didn't you? And it was, <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> And then you'd be surprised when I go, ah, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody rude he is. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I said bring your hat as well. I mean, look at it. I'm not wearing my hat. No. That's it. Now that, that's the right. box of tricks. Now it's going to be serious for the rest of the evening. Oh. Right. It's, Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, we, we, we started off uh, getting into this subject because... If you remember, many, many years ago, six years ago now, I, I was putting together an exhibition um, to try and raise awareness about the trouble that is faced by so many birds in the world today, and that have become critically endangered. And I approached 125 artists and asked them to donate a piece or to put a piece in the show where they depict an extinct species. And... Most artists got back to me straight away and either said, are you kidding, or yeah, I'd love to do it. And then somebody gave me Ralph's email, because he'd always been on my list, on my hit list of top people I wanted for the show. And um, they said, just when you've given up hope, when you think nothing's going to happen, something will magically drop in your inbox. 
I know it sounds like a euphemism, but never mind. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, not a very nice oh, no. one. So let's <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and then after about two months, suddenly this email appeared. And um, I saw Ralph Steadman's name there. God. And I opened it oh. up and it said, I have no idea what you want. It sounds intriguing. We'll phone later. <laughs> and, then, and then later that day, you phoned me. I phoned you? You did. Oh, it's okay. all your fault while we're here. Yes, I see. Nothing right. to do with me. Okay. You phoned me and mm. uh, you suddenly said, I've just written a story. And my first contact with, with you was suddenly sitting down on my couch while Ralph Steadman <laughs> read this fantastical story with all sorts of different voices and, and, and what have you. And for about 20 minutes, I just lay back on my couch and go, well, this is really interesting. Well, and then you said, so what are we doing? And then that was it. <laughs> you, start, you drew one bird. I explained what we wanted. You drew one bird. And then you drew another. And then you drew another. And suddenly you couldn't stop. And we ended up <laughs> in this relationship where uh, I think you did 110 birds. Ah, and that was, yeah, but I did another 110 the next day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. I know, you're so quick. You know. <laughs> Rapid. I mean, we've got thousands of books to do with that. Yeah, right? I'm trying to remember what the story was already. I'd love to know it. It was you know. very good. There was some great accents in it. It's, but the, that's the other thing. We sometimes forget things. It's, it's, you remember what we forgot. Yes, the greatest <laughs> joke ever told. It was so funny, we couldn't stop laughing. And Jackie, le, I don't know who he is. What's what? his name? <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Kerry's, <laughs> Kerry's wife <laughs> laughed also. And then I asked him, what was that funniest joke we've ever heard you know this was immediately after we told yeah. it i mean and, and this was on sky at he six said club. uh jackie what was that joke we told that you know he's got a voice like that you know some really but i've got this voice that i speak like this to you i don't need a sound system at all but anyway never mind it's a lot more fun yeah oh, what oh, <laughs> yeah. Ears out there. <laughs> See, oh yeah Damaged the ears, I'm sorry. And that was anyway, it, wasn't it? We, yes, we, we did that. Know it was we, don't, we don't know the joke anymore. We no. can't remember it. We but don't. if anyone finds it, it's ours. Yeah. <laughs> so keep an eye out for it. When you find it, and it's the funniest, it's yeah. it, it was us that came up with it. I mean, somebody said to me earlier this evening, Mr. Goodwin, um, well, it couldn't have been that funny then. But it's not that simple. It's like, as I said to you, there's a piece of music you've written or thought of in the car or whatever. You go, I'm never going to forget that. And then it's gone. And th that's why yeah. any time we do anything, Ralph always shouts at me, write it down immediately. I if either, we stop yeah. and laugh. Most of the time you do write it down. Yeah, but it was and, I, and I go, thank God it's written down because I don't bother. You know? I just wasn't uh, quick enough to write it down. So no, it's, yeah, yeah. It's kind and of I, a, so I don't know what you've... You've ruined everything somehow. Yeah, I'm, 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 you were starting anyway. I'm feeling quite down now. And if you want to hear anything about birds, he knows about them. And other night. creatures. So. And other, yes, he's quite good at that. He is actually quite good at it. He actually knows, really does know something about them. Whereas I'm the pretender and I, I can sort of... I do, I have a, a way of working now called my dirty water period. If you'll excuse me. But we me. can explain that in a minute as a surprise. No, oh, well, I see. Oh, uh, shall I go, shall I go out there and come back? <laughs> <laughs> just spin forward on the images. Just a little bit. <laughs> Maybe we'll come back to that one. Yeah, OK. But why oh, don't sorry. We, we, there, actually, that's, that one, that was your dirty water period, which... That was the beginning. That was it? the beginning. That was the very first image. And let's explain what happened. Dirty water period. This is something I termed Picasso had his blue period, his rose period. This is Ralph's dirty water period. And, and this happened because one day Ralph knocked over the dirty water jar, which he cleans his brushes and his pens in, and it went all over a sheet of paper on the floor. But instead of going, oh God, I've made a dreadful mess, I've got to clean it up, you thought something different. You found it intriguing, didn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I walk into this every time. I did that deliberately. <laughs> and I laid it down. I, when I, I poured the water, brushed from it, 
the swirl on the brushes like that in it, so get it really swirling. Then go and put a piece of paper on a fresh, on a, on a sort of absorbent underneath, <laughs> put a piece of paper down, and then threw the water oh, on. Just on the mat. Yeah, no, I did. <laughs> this is awful, you know. Who is this? <laughs> interrupting when I'm trying to explain. And I dropped it on there, and you couldn't tell anything then, except the dirty water was on this lovely splat. And um, I'd left it, and I left it out at least for three days, actually. And when it was dry, it didn't only have the tonality of gray dirtiness, it also had textures. I had never seen this kind of thing before. It was a natural, Thing that, that <laughs> yeah, if you like, yeah. In the nicest possible way. Yeah. And so I left it. And then I did more and more that way. Some of them became more, more, more interesting than others. But in them, I could see, like people see in clouds and things, they see faces and the like. It's exactly that, really. But that's what, so, what happened with this first one. You brought, you brought this, and I took this photo off Skype on the evening it had dried. And yeah. we started discussing oh. what... what because you, you hadn't found a way into the book yet, and you were looking for a yes. way to do it, because as you said, with birds and the last two <coughs> books yes. that we've done, you said, well, it's easy, you can make a mess, you can do this, and as soon as you put a beak on it, it's a bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> that, ha that happened, yes. <laughs> it was an easy book to do, the first one, That's the bird. Yeah. <laughs> Boyds, I called them Boyds, that was it. Which I wish I hadn't, but never mind. It. So but that was that, that one. Was that. And yes. then we, we were talking about, why well, it, looks, it looks kind of greeny, bluey, sort of, it looks kind of aquatic. And you said, well, what's on the list? Because I make these lists of things we have to do, which Ralph detests, don't you, my, my horrible lists, because they're like chores. And you well, they are, aren't they? I mean, it's a list of demands. It's not a list of lists, it's a list. Of demands. And it doesn't even list, list the left or right. It's actually Straight down a demand <laughs> down, you know, it's, you've got to do this, and you've got to do this by tonight, because tomorrow morning I, I'm going out where do you, you go wandering around in uh, the countryside? Arlington, no. Where, where is it? Allington? Allington? Allington. No. Allington, yes. And also the point. other place, Uppington. Is uh, it? You've got a low battery. Anyway. You've got a low battery alert on your computer. Oh, just to let you know. Oh, is, it, is there anything else going to go wrong? You want to have it? Let's have it. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. What I didn't bring tonight was the custard pie. <laughs> Never mind, we don't but have anyway, that. Anyway, so this, we, we, after looking at the list, I said, well, what, you know, you said, what is on the list? And I said, well, there's a, a, a hump head ras, which yes. if we go to the next photo, is it? Oh, it's the one. looking for the connector uh. to charge <laughs> the laptop. Did you leave yours? Sorry? Did you leave yours? Uh, I, I don't know. I'll go and find the charger. Okay, <laughs> oh. thank you. <coughs> More well, I've the next picture. Yeah. If I can. If you can. Um, yes. Look ah, there. there and, they, and this became the yes, there's the, the there, there are the textures on that blue. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe it that when I saw it. Yeah. It was just a sort of kind of thing about it. <laughs> and I, you know, it's just mm -hmm. something yeah. fun, you know. And then uh, a friend of ours also thought, that's not a real fish, is it? Humphead wrasse. I said, okay, then it's what you call someone, you humphead rass, you, <laughs> you humphead son of a rass, you know. And so, um, you know, that, that's how that, that came out. But it's uh, and that was the first one, wasn't it? And, yeah. And then you then started deliberately throwing water on the paper. Um, I see. <laughs> that's how it happened. Okay. Yes, that's how it happened. But so, <laughs> that's, I mean, you know, I mean, it. Yeah. And, it, and it gave us a way into it. If we can go back to... What? Well, once we've oh, no, don't do idea. that one again. That's a boring... Oh, here we are. That. Oh, God, that's the okay, one I want to see. That, that one. one. Now, you see, that's not in the book. Oh, yes, it is. It is in the it's book. just in the book. But that, they asked us... Well, to do this book, for people to understand, we need a prologue. No, no. we need a synopsis. synopsis. Sorry. We need a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. Yeah, we need we need a synopsis. No children so I said, "What do they look like?" You know, synopses. 
So, um, <laughs> I, I thought... Really I... Snippy. I was going, we've done two books, why do they need a synopsis? They know what we do, we've had the idea, that's it. He said, oh, don't be so sniffy, just think. What would a synopsis look like? Right, so as soon as you said that, you went off and, and created did, and this. drew this, and that, so that's in there. Yeah. So this is a synopsis. So, but, in the, <laughs> but but I was going to have it in the centre of the book when you opened it. It was right in the middle, and it would have been a bigger drawing. But they decided to put it in the right way. The around. right way around on a you know. And the, the, anyway, the, never mind. So what it? we did with this drawing is we sent this image off to the board meeting at Bloomsbury and said, here is our synopsis. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. And we got a call within about five minutes of the meeting to yeah. say, OK, the book's been accepted, and that was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'd yeah, love to have been a... in that meeting and seen what they said. Yeah. So. <laughs> so they were sporting, and they let it go. And then, from the, then we had to think, was it an afterthought? Or a... No. No. <laughs> it might be now. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was one at the end. Um, well, we, no, we were going. You, you said it'd be do... great if we, we didn't have a forward, that we had a backward. Yeah, backward. We need a backward. <laughs> yes. So that was going to be something to finish off and do it and write it backwards. You know, and really do one. Do a do a proper something. Some deep. You know, like something like uh, awards or the badges of mediocrity or. Um, uh, uh, don't what tell me. Hmm? Yeah, what I say three times is true. What I say three times is true, Humpty, Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> yes. Thank you, my wife, Anna. Is, well, uh, uh, thank you, my dear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah. It, but we did end up, because when we were finishing the book off, we got the, um, the, the Director General of the WWF, and that's not wrestling. <laughs> you know, it's a yeah. World Wildlife Fund for those who don't know. Yeah. Oh, no. I Come on. Didn't know that. Maybe you shouldn't be in here. And no. <laughs> yeah. but, so uh, we got him to do the forward. Except the way that the book laid itself out at first was really late doing it, and it was an amazing thing to get him to do it. I didn't think he'd do it, but I knew him through Bird Life where he was before, yeah. and he did it. And, and just the layout, it wouldn't fit at front. So we came up with the the only space we had was on page 19. So we ended up having the page 19 forward. So it kind of kind of fitted oh, yeah. in with our philosophy of never never is anything quite correct in our sort of world. Uh, that is like life. Isn't that it? is that's like yeah. my life since I met you. Yeah. <laughs> and I've drawn Trump since I met him. <laughs> Yeah, have you, you yeah. did uh, Trumple Stiltskin. Trumple Stiltskin, yeah. yeah. He's an easy target. Yeah, he was, yeah. But I did him also as a, just for a moment, go on. I did, I did him as, uh, in a, in a, as a baby in diapers, and the diaper was the American flag. You saw that, did you? Oh, you saw that? Oh, thank you. Yeah, good, that was good. Realistic, wasn't it? Yeah, realistic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you get people who like yeah. things like that wearing divers in late life? Yeah, <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. And it was taken from life that portrait. Wasn't yes, it, it absolutely. Yes, really I thought. came across him wearing them and looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there we go. With his tiny hands. Yes, yeah, so they were they were frozen. They were frozen. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's, uh, we're being silly now. No, so, exactly, no, yeah. because we're actually serious conservationists. Yes. And, and, and that's something that sort of came up out of nowhere, because um, we are talking one day, and I was saying, oh, you know, what the world of conservation needs is a bit of alternative thinking, and, you know, if any of you are interested in conservation, you, you'll know that it's, it's quite a, a difficult world to approach if you're not from that world. It's, you know, every organization is always trying to raise money they're you know usually trying to approach the same people time and again with great initiatives and everything really is all about trying to engage with new audiences so we kind of thought well we're kind of alternative conservationists and then then we were chatting and i think i said yeah it's like gonservation it could be gonservationists and <laughs> and you mm. laughed and then you stopped you went Oh, messing with Gonzo, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, can't do it. I have yeah. to think about that. And then you yeah. went away and thought about it, and then you came back and said, 
no, we can use it. And from that moment, we've been conservationists. And, and I think... I see, yeah. Know, well, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it is, but a lot of you don't, may not know, and we may as well say it now, about the word gonzo, that um, it's a Portuguese word, and it means hinge, and which could mean unhinged. You know, you could go both ways. And it was a guy, Joe, I can't remember his name now. Huh? Bill Cardoza. Bill Cardoza. I keep saying Joe to start with. Can we do another chair up there? <laughs> <laughs> Anna's got a hell of a memory. I, I might have lost mine. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, yeah, Joe, Bill Cardoza. <laughs> Bill, Bill Cardoza. And he Another lived in Sosalita. He lives on, off, on the other side from Los Angeles. Over the Brooklyn Bridge. Is that now? Is that somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> I think these mistakes are very subtle. You don't realize I'm having you on, aren't I? <laughs> but uh, I just think it's funny. But he was the one who came up with that. And Hunter Thompson said, Gonzo? What the fuck's Gonzo, Ra? You know, Gonzo? No. Hey, wait a minute. I like that word, Gonzo. Gonzo, yeah, yeah, okay, it's Gonzo. And it was Gonzo from then on, you know. And he hadn't heard the word before, didn't know what it meant, but it seemed to fit what we were doing. Because when he first met me, it was, I met three days looking for him in Kentucky. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then looking at it, and this suddenly, uh, heard behind me this voice, Ross oh, Edmund. <laughs> so I was turning. And he's up here, he's six foot eight, you know, something like six foot eight. And, and he said, holy God, he said, he looked at me. And, holy God, he said, they said you were weird, but, but not that weird. <laughs> so that was funny, that was a really funny meeting. And that, Would you think you've got weirder or less weird as you've got older? Stranger. Stranger, okay. But, no, no, yeah, well, you get more distressed in life and uh, you get worried about things. And you look around corners to see there's nothing there that's going to jump out on you, things like that, you know. Have you seen what's under your chair? You know, I hate critters, really, because, <laughs> because the damn things, they're forever doing things they shouldn't be doing in the wrong places, you know. And, uh, and the, the grey squirrels are pinching all the bird stuff, you know, you put out. You're trying to be nice, you know. And... and uh, and then they, the food balls are the ones they really go for. You know, the squirrels go for food balls. And so I never put food balls out anymore. I've left it empty and it looks, looks so sad. You know, he's going back, there's nothing there for them, you know. And I've got a catapult now because I'm trying to... <laughs> trying to, so trying to hit that's them. you being a gonservationist. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. There's just certain things that should live and let's get rid of the others. You know, <laughs> Can we go on? Can we get on, please? <laughs> that reminds me. We, a couple of years ago, we did Bird Fair. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Bird Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tim Appleton is here, who organises it all. Good to see you, Tim. But oh, we, right. we did an interview. Um, uh, of, well, we'd, we'd had a bit of a party the night before, and we just stayed up a little too late, and we ended up doing an interview with somebody who is a very serious conservationist, and, um, and the guy was really delighted to meet you and everything, and you were being a little grumpy in the morning. And, uh, and it was quite an early start, and, and the guy just said to you, oh, so, Mr. Stedman, what is it about birds? We, we, how much do you love birds? What are, birds? Can't stand them. Yes, <laughs> oh, trapping in the garden, oh, we've been making a mess. Well, as soon as we got shot of them, all the better. <laughs> Yeah. And the interview went downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it was, I was trying to explain to him that it was ironic, you know, and that sometimes you just can't escape from it. But, uh, but I mean, conservation is, <clears throat> you know, you, you've talked about this, about the fact that it's all about trying to do things with a smile. That's important, isn't it? To try and engage people by making them laugh. Or, and then letting them see a serious subject. Or cry and weep if you can get them to. If you can get them to weep, you've you've really won. <laughs> you know, you know. I wish I had my violin here, but I haven't got it. Until seeing you, never mind. I can't do violin. My father, 
My father can, but he's not here. Okay. And, he, and he, he used to play it like this, the violin, on his knee. Not like a cello, you know, it's really Like a tiny cello? Yeah, like a tiny cello on his knee. That's how he used to play the violin. And uh, that was funny. <laughs> but but humour um, is important to get these sort of messages across. I think, you know, I mean, when I look at all your, your, your drawings and I look around this room, and I, I do think these prints look fantastic. And yeah, I, I love the this way, is about the printing. That's good. Yeah, the, I mean, I the, mean, the uh, printing quality here is just absolutely unbelievable. amazing. Unbelievable. Uh, this isn't a sales pitch. This is just no. like, seriously truthful. You this think is, these are amongst like, the best prints you've had done. This is a gold hawk. Is it gold? gold, gold. gold. <laughs> There goes your TV commercial. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, the gold mark. Yeah, the gold mark thing that I thought, you know, no, I'd never seen any printing. I hadn't, I had to say that it's the best printing I've ever seen done of my work, you know. It's amazing things. And I can't even improve on it now. It's done. I think we added a bit to the elephant there. I had a sew, I sewed on the bottom bit of the elephant's trunk. Well, yeah, well, I'll explain why. Um, if, if the elephant over on the your left hand side, you might see there's sort of like a thick line um, about three quarters of the way down. That's because where initially the trunk stopped and Ralph sent it to me. He said, oh, what do you think? And I said, I think the trunk's a little short. Said, oh, you judging me, judging the artist. Who the hell are you to judge me? <laughs> and, and then about half an hour later, you sent this through with this added piece of trunk, but with serious stitching around it. <laughs> <laughs> <Very low. laughs> I, I kind of, I, I get what you were trying to say there. See? Yes. I just don't get too smart, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. dead man. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, you know, so yeah. I, it, it is quite amazing when you look at them, because they, they all glow, and actually they glow even better than in the book, you know, they're, they're vibrant, you see the true colours of, yeah. of what you've done. And um, I mean, do you have any favourite creatures that, that you do? I mean, do you like seeing these creatures suddenly in frames? Are you asking me? Yeah, why not? Uh, oh, yes, I'm here too. That will be the <laughs> point where I say something about these things. And for instance, <laughs> that snail over there, I can't stand snails, you see. But that one I quite like because it's got the sense of fantasy within the shell. And that I, and I like that kind of thing about art. And it's what Wittgenstein said, the Ludwig Wittgenstein, the German philosopher, the only thing of value is the thing you cannot see. It's not the thing, no, the only thing of value is the thing you cannot, yes, say. see. Say. You cannot say. say, but if you can see it, bingo, you've got your really, you can understand what it means. It's like trying to write an envelope to someone, you go turn left here, go there, and there. but if you can just show what you're trying to say, it looks like this, a peculiar creature, a dugong, for instance, is on the wall, is a weird, weird creature. And uh, drawn, you go, ah, oh, interesting one. You know, it, it can't possibly exist, but it's interesting to see. But it does exist, and you hadn't seen a dugong before. Well, no, I'd seen one in TV programs. What I hadn't seen was one for the book. Uh, there always happens a moment where you go down to the, to the studio and I, I call it the Stedman Uncontinuum because things change in there. It's like a quantum world. It's not quite the same as outside. And we get down there and we're going through everything for the book. And the idea is that I see everything as it comes through and start organising everything and then writing and, and placing it in the right order and things. I get down there and we've just about finished. And I suddenly see this dugong, which is hanging over there. And I said, I've never seen this before. And you said, didn't think I'd show you everything, did I? <laughs> <laughs> and you thought, oh. okay, fair enough. And, you know, yeah. It's always a surprise. But then also things disappear in the, in the Stedman world as well. <laughs> you know, you remember in the first book, we had the pale blue piddles. Yes. Very serious birds they were, but um, they, they were drawn but disappeared into what we call the drawer of disappearance. Yeah. And then in this one, you came up with the scuppered dunt. The scuppered dunt was, is lost. It's lost. We're looking like, for a like scuppered the dunt. Joke ever. So yeah. perhaps the scuppered dunt has stolen the funniest joke ever. That could be possible. They could have gone off somewhere, yes. But it's really hard. When you see you know, your artwork this sort of size, how they just disappear, we just don't know. Mm. But, but it happens. Do, yes. you, do you think something strange happens in your studio? 
No, I think we have to do a book now about where is this and where is that, <laughs> and please help. You know, for just three pounds a month, you could help us to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering about that stuff because where does that money go? I don't know. I never see what happens to it. You know, for just £3 money, you, you can clear the waters of filth and stuff like that and give everything, all these people, instead of having c carry jerry cans of dirty water or maybe diesel fuel that they're, they're taking on, you know. <laughs> so all that stuff is going on. And I think there's more to it than we realise. We're being taken for a ride all the time about these things. And I think, for instance, I have had an idea, I mentioned it to my friend Jim Caruso, who makes this ale, I think some of you may have drunk some tonight. But there's so, such a popular drink is beer, not just flying dog beer, but dog beer generally. And they should perhaps put a, take a penny off each pint and that give to towards something, as long as you know where it goes. And I think that should be a central field where all monies go to and it is distributed knowingly. Then somebody knows where it's going. So that money is allocated for certain places. And that, I'm really, I've just thought about these things being what they should be. I'm, I'm afraid that for just three pound a month thinking is baloney so now. Does that mean then you would end up drinking loads more beer? I'm, you're not, in the I'm not, I'm not me, because I'm not. No? Uh, no? No? <laughs> no I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, if everything's going to it, you might think, I can have more beer and save the world. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it's like... Okay, the, yeah, well, in, in a fun way of going, yeah. you know, can be, if you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. so inclined, yes. But, I mean, if somebody needs saving is the orangutan up here, and I love him. Mm. I think, you know... Oh, he's up there, yes. <clears throat> he, I mean, he's, he's such a great choice of the cover star, isn't he, for the, for the catalogue... Um, but here. That has been done, yes. And I, I love the fact that you've got that little guy up at the top. Oh, that's supposed to be his baby. You know, yeah. Actually, that's a hopeless, you know, hopelessly I mean, unfinished just, baby, that is. I mean, so where did you start with that? I mean, what makes God you knows. decide? Oh, the log. I started with the log. Yes. Wh which what log are you on? referring to? This. <laughs> oh. See, they've seen it too. What? That is not, nothing to do with anything. That just happened to be, that is part of the stainy, accidental stain that is nothing more, nothing less. So don't, I don't if people have minds on you, then fair enough, you know. But please go to the next one and stop. <laughs> next one. slide will be, of course. Oh, that's uh, okay. the beginning. Ah, okay. here's a good, good example. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. Now, this is where we have a little bit of audience <clears throat> participation. Yeah. So, as I was saying, Often Ralph would have these finished sort of splat paintings and we'd hold them up and we'd try and work out what they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to have prizes now. Um, anyone who gets this right gets a t-shirt, an I'm a conservationist t-shirt. So oh, there we go. put your hands up if you think you know what... No, you know this. I, do. <laughs> yeah. I know, but you'll get a conservationist Don't tell it! Don't. You're his grandchild. It's illegal yeah, to let you enter. <laughs> No, but you do know. No, but, no, you can't tell me. Is you it crow sitting down? What? Oh. Is it crow sitting down? No, it's not crow sitting down. See, you've lost it. You're even in the family. <laughs> God. No, you can't keep saying it. <laughs> no, it's just you. Let somebody else have it. Let, let someone else have it. Right, okay, you. It's a badger, isn't it? It's a badger, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> wow, it could have been Dan. It could have been a badger, but... Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You heard him say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, blimey. I'll get me coat. <laughs> yeah. well, Off you go. Let right. me be quiet. Turn it with that. Okay, that's a, that's a winner. And yeah. just to prove, even though you don't really need it. To <laughs> oh, yeah, there, that was it. But that was yeah. amazing, because that, that was one of those, we both just went hippo as soon as we saw it, and yeah. then we turned it into that. And I yep. think it's just incredible what you added on. And, uh, and what, how, do you, yeah. how do you end up painting these things? Do you go and look online? You talk to photo? me. Yeah. <laughs> 
always talking. Yeah. <laughs> now then, how do? Well, no, it, it has to be something. By the end, you know, that you do all that mess and wait for it to dry. So there's patience involved too, and then there's a sense of uh, uh, investigation. What's it going to be? If you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. Like, what, what is that joke? What's that joke? And also, what is what is this thing you're doing? And when you think you know it is, you start adding bits that look like what it is. There must be the inside of a mouth there. So that goes on, the oranges and the... Why am I talking to him? I'm talking to him. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> so, anyway. And so I just... Uh, I, I'm guided by what it is. That's what I, what I like about it. It's the, the unknown tells me there's something needed there, and that's when you start... Sorry to get you yawning there. Uh, so. <laughs> You begin to look, reminding me of that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We, uh, oh, God. These things. So anyway, that's, that's how it comes along. And, it, and these things are added to. I don't suddenly do... I, you see, I can't stand doing um, rough sketches before you do it. It's like, for instance, people say to me, you know, uh, uh, when they go straight in in ink, don't you do pencil? And I said, no, it's Australian. So, well, don't you make a mistake? I said, there's no such thing as a mistake. A mistake's an opportunity to do something else. That's what you do, and that's, what they, that's how they become what they did become, because it's only that they started to remind you of. Like, I've seen uh, two people, one, one, Ken Livingstone, where we were eating tonight, you might know his name, yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. That's Tony Husband. Would you yeah. like to stand up, Tony, and show everyone how much you look like Ken Livingstone? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our fellow cartoonist from the private eye. And, yeah, uh, yes. yeah. So, and, and the other, I just met, met a young lady who reminded me of... Uh, um, <laughs> I've forgotten who she reminded me of, you oh, see. Yeah. You can see how I think forgetfulness is very creative, actually. Well, well, I'll remember it a little later on. Should yeah. we go to the next? Yes. And, uh, okay, this one. Let's have a guess. Ah. Anyone else right? Have a little think. No, right you're, you are so bad from entering it. No, no. Over there. No. no to, please yeah. let everyone else have a go. Because okay. Like, yeah, because you know it. <laughs> oh. I blame the mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> okay. Gorilla. Gorilla. Good, but no, it's not. Can't believe it. Uh, oh, yeah, go what? on then. The bonobo. The bonobo, that's absolutely right. The bonobo. <laughs> bonobo. <laughs> and if you move on, we'll see so that just transforms. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So you get a T-shirt. Get a T-shirt, yes. Remind me, because I'll deny all knowledge. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> what, love? I think I know the joke. You want a joke? I think oh, I know oh. the joke. Oh, dear. Um, what's 20 foot long and smells musty? Oh, yeah. What's 20 foot long and smells then. musty? Tell us, go Line on. Line dancing with no people, so... Line no. dancing with no people. <laughs> Turn around. Uh, this is a little old day. <laughs> You're right, you should have left him at home. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's funny. That we yeah. <laughs> That's an old people's home. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I, I love the bonobo because, again, yeah. that texture, if we go back again, um, you know, yeah. how you sort of visualise that? Or, or, well, how I can see the eyes that? in it, for a start. Yeah. Okay, I can see the eyes in that. They were natural. That was just yeah. absolute excellent. But you told me you started with something else. You didn't start with the main character in that, did you? Don't I give don't. me in it again, please. <laughs> what? <laughs> you remember you said you started with the... Uh, it's going to get bottled in a minute. <laughs> yeah, you, lost you, sta you started with the young one first, didn't you? On this, you told me. No, I did. I just I led, led you astray. I didn't. I started with the bonobo. 
and then I put the other fellow in. I, put, I thought I'd tell you that because it seemed more intriguing to have <laughs> the baby in before the actual parent. I thought you'd know enough about them to realise I was telling a complete phony. I'm still so trustworthy and gullible. Yes, I know. That's why it's fun. Oh, thanks for the art. Um, but I mean, <laughs> also, the way you, you do it, you sort of, you don't really overwork the drawing, do you? Just give certain lines the power and the strength to give the, the body shape. So, so I let, make it look half finished, you mean? <laughs> No, I think we better move on. I ain't going to win with this one. <laughs> Should we move on to the next one? Okay, this one. What, anyone have a think about this one? You're desperate. You know these two. In fact, yeah. <laughs> Ollie, can you pass the bag of T-shirts? It's just behind that. What's going to happen now? Three, three kind of cheating going through yes. the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ollie. <laughs> so, this is what you want to give people. Yeah. What? And actually, you're wrong. <laughs> there we are. What? You're wrong? The, somebody's just had a go. Um, okay, so these are. What size? We've got all sorts of sizes. So these are the I'm a conservationist t shirts, which are pretty smart, I think you're fine. Normally retailing for 20 quid, but if you get this one right, you could take one home tonight yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, any, any other guesses? I think it's the one behind Jay's head, which I'm informed is the antelope. Do you know what? Any time people get things wrong, I think we're going to charge them a tenner to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the rhino. I, I'm sorry? It's the rhinoceros. Uh, I'm sorry, that's absolutely incorrect. It's not, it's not, it's the rhinoceros. <laughs> which one? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing here? This, this is why you got booted out of power, Mr. Livingston. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I need a t-shirt and I know exactly what it is. <laughs> well, then you, I'm not sure, um, no, because you yeah. worked on the print, so we'll, we'll see what yeah. we can sort out through that. Right, at the back, the young gentleman with glasses. Yeah, that's you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. I just thought I'd throw you off the scent. <laughs> it's that one there, it's three, 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 so even with the animals all around you, you still get it wrong. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Okay. So this is quite good. Yes, isn't it? Interesting. How they... Sorry, Mike. Um, the gorilla. You were yawning, so I'm not taking yours yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you were yawning. Yeah. You say gorilla and you're wrong. We are raising so much money for charity tonight. At the back, very back. Lion. Lion is absolutely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> The, you've had a go in the first round, and the badger. I still can't get over it. Uh, who else? In, we're just throwing animals at this one, aren't we? No, it's not the injury. Do we all give up, or does it? No, a confident man. I think it's You think it's rat no. It's not. It no. will be later. Yeah. <laughs> Some more flying dog in it. But no, it's not. Uh, not the rat ass skunk. That's kind of a correct answer, but still wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's... Is it the horse? Is it the horse? Finally, someone says horse. Uh -huh. No one said horse. And, and it it's wrong. Build them up, knock them down. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, well, should we just show what yeah, it is? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. The white antelope. Right, hello. The Adax, yeah, I think. The Adax. Yeah. So, you know. so that's what that is. So it, it obviously didn't suggest that at all, did it? That was just a. a that they're, was they're not believing it out there. There's no. unrest. It <laughs> sounds unrest like it. Sounds like it. We pushed it too far. I think you. But, yes. We're going to move on to the next one. <laughs> ah. ah. Th this one, the, none this of one. you will get. So. <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's no, just. It, it's this is actually, would you like to explain this one? Yes. It's Has anyone actually seen the book yet? No. Well, you're not very good, are you? <coughs> no. It's, it's actually... It's not in the catalogue because it's not been done. So no, is that is, right? This is a, yeah, this is a make-up oh, one. Oh, God, yes. Well, this is the, this is the, um, the Ratsab. Drat -sab. No, the Dratsab. Drat a Dratsab, with, but with a, a Dratsab baby in a onesie, actually. <laughs> and you, you like can just about see the onesie. Can you hear the... Can you move on? 
the next one. The next you'll one, see. you'll see. Oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. A total drat sab and a baby drat sab in a onesie. There we are. Would you, you like see. to explain? Does anyone, can anyone work out what a drat sab is? Oh. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a future, but just not today, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know. No, no good. Yeah. But no Stedmans or anyone related to Stedmans are allowed to <laughs> enter the competition. Bart so Williams. Backwards. Bastards. Backwards. So what would that be? I couldn't possibly say. Oh, <laughs> you <laughs> bastard. <laughs> yeah, it's a bastard. Backwards, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. He was called, so that was one for me, wasn't it? Yes. I think you called me that. and then you. That came. did, <laughs> yes. So that was it. So moving on to the next one. Um, ah, ah, this is one of our favourite characters. Yeah. This is this is Dr. Bent Gerders. Gerders. He's no, Norwegian critologist. critologist yeah. and, that uh, was the beginning of them. He became one of our favourite characters. And this yeah, slime out, green has slime green finish to him, yes. And this came out because you showed me a photo uh, which actually was Tate Modern. You said, oh, I love this building. It's got amazing Bent Gerders everywhere. And I went, oh, what? The Norwegian critologist. And you went, Better draw him, and off you went and came up with him. <laughs> that's, that's right. And so yeah. he's actually on this island where all our extinct and, and endangered species. All live. the critologists are Norwegian or Swedish. <laughs> well, I think Is there and any reason? Not anymore. What? Is there any reason for that? Well, they sort of they treat the subject seriously. You seem to you're so flippant about it all. <laughs> <laughs> And these people here are deadly serious sitting here. Yeah. They're laughing, just, but they're laughing, not taking anything in, they're just laughing. <laughs> you know, they think they're Bruce Forsyth classes now, uh, you know. <laughs> um, we, we should do that. Bruce? Well no, no that was it. No, that was more than one wise, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh dear. It's well, horrible. Anyway, Dr. Bent Gerders, yeah. he mm. he looks after all the endangered creatures yes. on Toadstool Island, which is Another story that runs through the book where yeah. we try and look after all the creatures. Yes, you stole them. my idea about Oh, here we go. <laughs> I did a thing that was very interesting. A tree came down in our house, uh, not in our house, but in the, <laughs> in the, in the, in the garden, around the garden. And it was a horse chestnut. And um, it was, uh, well, it was actually Bruce Robinson who did, Withnan and I, who first told me about how lovely, he said, he, he came, he was pissed one day and he fell under the tree. I said, ah, oh. I said, I went up to him, how do you like my tree, Bruce? He said, it's not your tree, Ral. It's everybody's tree. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Sib, okay, yeah, sure. So anyway, that, Eventually, he died that tree, you know, not because of Bruce, but you know, that, yeah, bless his heart, he's lovely. But um, it was that one, there's one round the other side, and that one is covered in lichen and bits and bits of old mushroom, you know, like big mushrooms that come out of it. But the first one I saw around it as it died was on a, on a stump of the, the rooting that came up out of it, it was like an island. And out of it came a perfectly formed toadstool. It was only, it was only about that big, big of my fingers, that's all. And, and then it went straight down into this so-called island. And I suddenly thought, you know, I'd better take a photograph of that before it just disappears, <laughs> because when it's gone, it's, I don't think I'll see one again. And I took a photograph out there and then, and thought, Toadstool Island, I must write about that. There was a gardener in it called Alan who hates flowers. You know, there was a lot So, so it's all like we cross reference everything like that. It works. And um, uh, that was what he then saw. And he said, That's, and I hadn't thought of doing this with the, the critters to, to, to put them on an island where they could live safely. He pinched that idea and suddenly used it for that, you know. I thought, God damn it. There's I... room on the island for everyone. Was there? Yes, Not, there's no people. There were no cars or traffic or no, anything. There still isn't. Nothing decent. Alan's still there. 
Alan's there. Alan's yes, he's still, still kicking down. So, you know, yes, you, flowers. You, you've provided a perfect space. Was oh, that for it? All to live. Okay. Well, I'll let, okay, I'll let you have it. I have to think of another island place now. <laughs> Something. Anyway, why don't we yeah. talk about this creature? Yeah. This, this. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> this is the uh, articulated. Uh, well, Boomlice, Nietzsche. Boom Boom yes. Not bum lice. It may look like bum lice, but <laughs> it's not yes. about Boom um, yeah. Found in the, in the jungle regions of Toadstool Island, nowhere near Alan the Gardener, um, and is a very dangerous creature to find in your buttocks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are. This is disgusting. Did I really do these drawings? This is what? I don't know. I found this very strange man. He yeah. seems to like fart jokes and boomly chase. Really? <laughs> yes. Ah, I see, okay. <laughs> well, I like it anyway, but it, did they put it in the, oh yes, it's in the book. It is yes. in the book. Yeah, okay. But not a print, so you don't have to buy it. No. Just as well. <laughs> right. Ah. Uh, uh, this is, this is. This is the fin whale. The fin whale. Or as you said, not a fat whale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not very funny. But he's one of my favourites. I love, I love him. Yes. But he... um, again, you know, the sort of strength you get from him, and also something about the eyes. They always seem to follow you around the room. And they're, they're just, yeah, there's something. What is it about eyes in your in your pictures? Because they always seem to draw you in. What do you only kind of put a circle and a dot in the middle? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Follows you around the room. I just uh, to make you make everything sound so <laughs> difficult and complicated. And I tell you the simplest thing, and a child would do that for you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm trying to get back to my child. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But we'll move on to the next. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Oh, the baby. Yes. Yeah. The little pygmy elephant. Uh, hop. You see, he's hopping. But then I get I get worried about this leg at the front. It anatomically wouldn't work like that because. <laughs> You can't, they don't come out, you know, they, I don't know. It looks wrong. It looks wrong, yeah. Maybe so, he's line dancing or something. Yeah, he look, ah, yeah, he's a line dancer, yeah, there we go, we. And so, uh, I like him because he's a nice little fella, you know, so. Uh, next. Next. And there's the elephant with the sewn on bit. Yeah. You can just see the sewn on bit and that. And then, okay, this is, oh. I think, just about the last have a guess one here. There's actually a few creatures in here. So if you can pick one out of the four creatures. Will they all get a T-shirt? Oh. Yeah, they'll get a T-shirt. Oh, there but you it's go. Right, safe. Yes. Um, okay, anyone got any clues? You, I know, I'm first with my hand up every time. All right, go on. <laughs> Gecko. Gecko? No. Right. Oh. Not in danger. Crab, no crabs. Camel. Camel. No cra camel. Frog. Frog. No frog. Flamingo. Flamingo. Now your daughter's got her hand up. Yeah. Sorry. I know, I know. I know. We should know them all. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. A snake. Oh, what kind of snake? Oh. Everyone's expecting oh, you to be you right know. down in a minute, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. The rattlesnake. Sorry. Rattlesnake. No. I, I, get it. I know you know. Uh, I don't know. I just, I just want like saying this words. What? <laughs> what words? <laughs> Boa and constrictor. No, but it's along those sort of like. I'm kind of saying. It's actually, if we move on, you'll see that in there is an. Indian python. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. So you know, it's in the tank. Yeah. With a couple of snakes. Yeah. Spider. One's an angler fish. One of them's a skin leech. One's a skin leech. Yeah. No, the, the other one is a why me. Because uh, Ralph came up with this creature called the why me. Why is it me that's in danger? It's really unfair. Yeah. And up the top, okay. Well, do, real or not, up the top, a There's spider. a spider that he's called a horrid ground weaver spider. Is that or is that not real? No. It's real. Yeah. It's real, yeah. It's real. It's real yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very serious looking guys. <laughs> <laughs> you like your bugs, don't you? Okay. Here's a badge for this one. 
Does and anyone know where the horrid ground weaver spider comes from and only lives where? I saw it in a book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyone other? <laughs> Wigan? <laughs> Wig Wigan, comes from Wigan. It's not quite as bizarre as that, or maybe it's more bizarre depending on how you view it. Um, anyone else have a... Yes? Wow. Guam. Guam. No. Guam, we go. Oh, God, we're going back to Trump it's, land. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Wales. It's Plymouth. Wales. It comes from Plymouth. <laughs> Plymouth. Yeah, Plymouth, yeah. Oh, you might have horrid ground weaver spiders in your bag. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. very, very tiny. But yeah, it's yes, only from found Plymouth. Plymouth. So there you go. Which it's is amazing, isn't it? It's an extraordinary thing. Mm, there we go. Um, okay. Okay. Did you say leech? Skin, skin leech. Right. Well, basically, um, they're only found on Toadstool Island, and they clean the swimming pools on the island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they literally skim the top off. I see, yeah. All the fungus. You're right, and yeah. So, Someone's got to do it. Holly ground weaver. Very useful if you've got swimming pools. Luckily, Ralph's got a swimming pool, haven't you? Yeah. Yes, I have, yeah. Yeah, so that's yeah. the Holly ground weaver. I just about, I could get all of you in at one time. <laughs> but please don't we in it. No, no. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, one oh. of my favourites. The uh, walrus. The walrus. Yeah. And what is that sort of like a nuclear cloud in the background? No, it's uh, trying to be a carpenter, but it didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see what you did there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and then the, the, the giraffe. Yes, and she says it looks nothing like you. One of those giraffes up there says, and says, I couldn't agree more, Geraldine. Looks and nothing like you, Gerald. Yes, that's yes. right. I love mm -hmm. him. And so, uh, anyway, he exists. And these are three toad sloth, yes, eating greens, yes. It's, they, Again, it's, a, such what? delicate line that you've got going on in there within all that sort of chaos and I mess. Could, I couldn't get any ink out of my pen. I, I, you know, it was, it was not working very well. Really? And so it came out in this much finer, pr refined way that I really liked it. So I didn't throw ink around it like sometimes I've done, you know, in a moment when I shouldn't, you know. And this was a moment I didn't. And so he didn't. And that blue shouldn't be on that. I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> the greens are okay, but the blue on the top of the nose, it's almost, it's a bit, it's a bit like a W.C. Fields nose, you know. I did want, I did want, there is a couple of things like that. I will tell you that, by the way, about the, somebody said, no, no gentleman ever asked for his present back. And W.C. Fields says, your idea of a gentleman, ma'am, is somebody who can double cross, screw, tattoo, and make a horse's ass of. Well, to me, that's no gentleman. That's a horse's ass. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, yeah, that was a... Oh, and the Hector's dolphin, I love him. Very balletic. Very balletic. Yes, he's not. I was trying to find out just where his... Um, uh, it was interesting. I was looking at frolicking... In, is it B Bib and Tucker? Bib and, and I was trying to figure out where his mouth was. I mean, and I think it's just beneath his nose, and it's but it's up against his, up against the nose. You know, there's the nose. Then if you the up against it, I can't do it. I can't do that. But the, but so he, in a funny way. Oh, this is the one I quite like. Yeah. That's his, the, well, it says I said you're from Africa. He said no, Sumatra. You're lying, I said. He said, that's right, I'm a lion. <laughs> then he roared with laughter and made a right mess of wretched... You see, wretched critters have written that on there. I've got this sub... sub... subterranean... Homesick blues? Well, kind of, but a sort of a, a resentment of animals somewhere. There is a... You know, they look... To some people they're lovely and cuddly, and you know those little poodles with their tufts and. What? Hey. So at that point we're just gonna. Oh. Open it up.
<laughs> oh dear, madam. <laughs> that brings us to the, the end of the tour of critical critics. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Sorry. Uh, if any of you have any questions before we go, more than happy to take them. Oh, look at him. From most people. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Badger man. Why isn't Toby sat up with you guys? Yeah. He could show us up even more. Yeah, he would. Uh, Make me look silly. Yeah, that's not funny. Go on. Go on. Um, that looks like me when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> really? Why? There you go. Hey, that wasn't the question. That wasn't really. It was a statement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Any more questions? <laughs> Yeah. Are, are all these animals in danger? That's the point of... Yeah. Every, yeah. every yeah. animal in the book is in danger. Is in danger. How could, yeah, how bad is that? Is it very serious? Or? Yeah, it's very serious. I mean, the, the, the figures are... If you, you know, we haven't really touched on the science side of it, Al, but the, the figures that are coming out is that from 1970 um, up to 2020, we'll have lost 50% of the animals and wildlife on this planet. That was here in 1970. And in another three is, years. Is it environment? Is it like I know China's a very us. You know, yes, us China definitely. Us. It's yeah. it's it's everybody really. I mean, there's so much that could be done. Um, you know that. Yeah, I mean, there's issues all over the world. You you know, there, there's hunting, there's logging, there's you know agriculture. So you, yeah. you, you you know the, the the numerous reasons that are endangering these animals. Are, are, well, actually, it's probably a small amount of actual issues, but they're being done everywhere. And it's all about, usually, economic progress. And poaching is a big thing. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, and, and you know, the odd thing is you can find these, these farms in China where they've got thousands of these endangered creatures that are purely being bred for, whether that's medicine or for meat or whatever, you know, salamanders are bred in thousands and thousands. And some of them break out of the farms and start breeding with the wild populations, which of course starts forming hybrid populations. So, so China, they have, they have tiger wine as well, you can buy wine hmm. from tiger bone. I know, and you've got to stop hmm. importing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. It's in your house. <coughs> while, while we've been sitting here, probably six elephants have died. They're going at every 15 minutes. And then oh, God. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, these are, these are facts that really are incredibly shocking you know you, you you can't quite comprehend how much is being decimated of the world and you know it's in a way we've kind of tried to avoid a lot of that subject tonight but also what we hope is that a bit of humor and a bit of a smile and a bit of a laughter about things actually then makes you engage with the subject and actually start yeah. getting involved because everybody can do something everybody mm. can find a way of supporting you know with, in the back of the book, we, we've listed all the animals and their charities and things. You know, if you've got a favourite animal, find out what you can do to help it. And, you know, you might be able to do something and participate in a project. You know, there's a lot to do out there. And actually, if we all start having a look, we can all make a difference. You can make a difference in your own home, in your own garden. You can put out feeders for birds. There's so many things you can do. But what we're hoping is that people engage with the issue. Yeah, we hope we've made you laugh a bit tonight and I hope you've had a really great time. But there are things that I really hope that everybody will take away from this other than that, which is if we all try and do a little bit, just possibly we can save a creature from dying and having a tough life. As I think the, the last <coughs> slide um, should say after the hedgehog, you know, as Kurt Vonnegut said, life is no way to treat an animal. Oh, yeah. And I kind of really hope we can change that philosophy because, you know, Without us, they're screwed, basically. <laughs> but, um, yeah. you know. Can we buy a book here to that? You certainly can. Yeah. <laughs> they are available, yeah. and so are the <laughs> very good questions. And don't forget the uh, t shirts for those who won. Them. Yeah, the t shirts yeah. for those who won. And, and, and what? Last question. Yeah, because I'm an entomologist, and so often the insects, don't, the, apart from butterflies, get a very good press. No. There would be a wonderful book. Of beetles that you could do. I was looking at one yesterday. It was dead, but I mean, uh, no, it was perfectly dead. It was. I was studying it on the table. It was just amazing. It was a. Uh, it was a bit of the bl that kind of blue black sheen on it. Fantastic, you know. I thought how beautiful they are. I thought of them as a. 
It should what be about it? the book. That has been a thought. The whole idea of doing a book on creatures that aren't particularly nice and the yeah. creep, creepy crawlies, yeah. really, yeah. of life. <laughs> you know, but to do a thing about them because they're fascinating things anyway. You know, I mean, I, I don't. I, I love um, dragonflies. I mean, they are so. Double, double wings? I mean, yeah, wings. come on, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. <coughs> so that's another thing that we'll get on I with thought tonight. about doing. <laughs> yeah, I better do it. Yeah. We better get out of here and start working on it. Yeah, Just okay. to say thank you very much to the Goldmark Gallery for doing these fantastic prints. Yes. They're all available for sale. Please have a browse. Please have a look. Please buy these prints because they're beautiful. Books are on sale out there. There's a few more beers and what have you. Oh. Special thanks as well. Oh. Uh, as well as Goldmark to Flying Dog Brewery for Jim and Megan for being over here and supplying the beer. Round of applause for them. Wow. Yeah. Um, A round of applause for the whole of the Goldmark Gallery and all the staff. Yeah. Yes, yes, all around, yes. And, and some, somebody, somebody give a little, a little clap for this guy here. He just, He's really done it, you know. <laughs> yeah. And give an even bigger clap. No, 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 no. educate, entertain our customers. Okay, so now we're going to look at some other of his prints. We're thinking very seriously about stopping making pots. It was nothing forced. And I think his jugs are, are really the epitome of that. Hello, welcome to today's broadcast from the Goldmark Gallery. One of my most regular places to visit up in this part of the world is the Goldmark Gallery. Yeah.